Welcome to Chicago, former home of the Potawatomi tribe, Ernest Hemingway and Edgar Rice Burroughs. Chicago is a concrete jungle that glimmers like a jewel this bright March day as winter slowly eases its grip upon the city. This is my hometown. It is always the same in some regards and in some ways it is so much different. There are ghosts in the sunlight and I sometimes think I hear a familiar voice calling to me from a shaded doorway or from the deepest center of some roaming baseball park crowd. Today, we'll be visiting the birthplace of Ernest Hemingway and then one of the homes of Edgar Rice Burroughs. These historic homes are only a few blocks apart down in Oak Park. However, before then we're stopping here at my grandparents' apartment where I spent so much time during the summers of my childhood. A feeling of nostalgia swells through me as I recognize the streets. In the summer of 1966, I roamed these streets with a handheld, battery-operated transistor radio so I could sing along with Petula Clark's downtown. It was a grand and exciting time, but still often turbulent. Back then, the Edgewater Tower apartments seemed so far away, and now they seem so close. I played baseball in this alley, and sometimes I pretended I was Superman or Green Lantern. Because I was so young, the 60s seems bittersweet now. I was aware of the civil rights movement which my family supported, and I desperately wanted to have a black friend as cool as Bill Cosby. Welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're taking a little literary tour of Chicago, but before we get to that, I thought I would take a look at the old neighborhood where I spent a lot of time as a child, way back when, and it was from here that I would start my book hunting. These were my streets, and I roamed from Ardmore to Ridge and over to Broadway. I was mugged on Broadway one afternoon in 1969. The Christmas times here made the street like a carnival and from each brownstone and tenement building came the sound of Christmas carols and the scent of roasted turkey and sweet potatoes. Today Sen High School seems unchanged and it was here I once encountered some bullies whom my grandfather chased away. I'm reluctant to leave because the memories are strong. I no longer have any relatives living in the city of Chicago. They have vanished like shadows in sunlight, disappearing into the past, and their bodies lie in the cemeteries across the state, both here and up in northern Wisconsin. My wife and I both enjoyed visiting Sen High School. I played here as a child and I have strong memories of the basketball games that were played here by the older kids. And my wife's parents and my parents both attended this school in the 1940s. So there's a strong family connection here, not only because of our parents but because I played here as a child. As I grew my explorations took me across the city to many fine and interesting places. As we cut across the north side on this bright day, I am conscious of the fact that Vladimir Putin is organizing further atrocities against the Ukrainian people. So far away and yet so close. I'm waiting for the concrete, steel and glass to turn to a radioactive ash. We are all sitting here poised on the edge of nowhere, waiting for it all to end. In the 60s and in the 70s, there was a cultural uprising in the United States where an effort was made to correct the mistakes of the past. Some of those efforts were successful, especially in the creative arts and in the world of literature, which saw the rise of science fiction and speculative fiction as a best-selling genre. Films changed too and our national identity was explored in a variety of creative ways. Always the threat of war hangs over us, from Vietnam to Iraq 
and now to Russia, all because of the workings of a madman. Driving down Lakeshore Drive brings back a host of memories and a lot of memories of great songs we used to listen to on the radio as we explored the city and uh, sought each other out, friends, neighbors, relatives, and just generally had a great time. We're heading south toward Oak Park, and in the distance you can see the Ferris wheel, which is down at Navy Pier. That is a great place to visit, and perhaps I'll take my camera down there one day to show that to you all. In the meantime, we push ahead, pushing past the crowds for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, heading south into Oak Park to visit the home where Ernest Hemingway was born. Perhaps in some way I'm making this part of the video for myself, a nostalgic look back at my past, and for you armchair travelers out there who can't travel, I hope you enjoy a peek at part of the city. It's a good city most of the time, and if you ever get a chance to visit here, I would recommend going downtown to uh, Millennium Park. Today is the day they have the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and the Chicago River has been dyed green. The memories come flooding back, and I can remember many, many times I walked in that parade, or I walked alongside that parade, and I remember Mayor Harold Washington looking at me with a startled look on his face as I raised my camera simply to take a photograph. The bowl of blue sky rises above us and I feel as if I'm sitting at the edge of the world, poised at a vast emptiness, waiting for the world to end as the Russian army marches across Europe. These are sad and disturbing thoughts in March of 2022. The party is about to begin. On this day of days, the St. Patrick's Day Parade is about to begin. And the loop is filled with thousands of people. They're having fun, they're smiling, they're laughing, they're moving forward, they're pushing ahead. I can recall with great clarity the words of Carl Sandburg when he was writing about Chicago. This is how Carl Sandburg described Chicago. Fierce as a dog with tongue lapping for action, cunning as a savage pitted against the wilderness, bareheaded, shoveling, wrecking, planning, building, breaking, rebuilding, under the smoke, dust all over his mouth, laughing with white teeth under the terrible burden of destiny, laughing as a young man laughs, laughing even as an ignorant fighter laughs who has never lost a battle, bragging and laughing that under his wrist is the pulse and under his ribs the heart of the people, laughing. Our progress is slow as we head south, trying to get away from the loop. The crowds are surging toward downtown, all ready for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And as we were trying to cut across the traffic and get away from the loop, I recall the poem by Carl Sandburg, yet another of many great poems that this wonderful writer wrote. This one is called Happiness, and here's how it goes. I asked professors who teach the meaning of life to tell me what is happiness, and I went to famous executives who bossed the work of thousands of men. They all shook their heads and gave me a smile as though I was trying to fool with them. And then, one Sunday afternoon, I wandered out along the Displains River, and I saw a crowd of Hungarians under the trees with their women and children in a keg of beer and an accordion. Here we are in Oak Park, Illinois, at the birthplace of Ernest Hemingway. Be sure to check out their website, the uh, Ernest Hemingway Birthplace and Museum. They have a lot of interesting things here. And uh, we're on our way over to the Edgar Rice Burroughs home, which is just a few blocks away. Hemingway's incredible journey in life began here in 1899. And from here, of course, he went on to lead one of the most remarkable lives in the last century, which included writing some of the greatest books of all time. Our final stop of the day was here on Augusta Street in Oak Park, just a few blocks away from Hemingway's home, and this is where Edgar Rice Burroughs once lived. And this is 1414 Augusta Avenue, 
or Augusta Street in Oak Park, Illinois. And this is the home of Edgar Rice Burroughs, where he wrote many, many great adventure novels. We're just a few blocks away from the Hemingway House. Actually, the Hemingway House is over there. And I wanted to show you this house today. Thanks for riding along. We'll see you soon along the dusty trail.